Hello, and welcome back to Off Grid Style. I'm Nikki, and I am so glad to have you here. I love when y'all watch my videos, as you well know, and I hope I teach you something. Today, I'm starting a brand new series. It's going to be what I like to call down and dirty information on a subject that is near and dear to my heart. And that is in a, in a situation where SHTF happens, Western medicine is either completely going to be gone or it's not going to last very long. So what do you do? What happens if you are a type two diabetic? What happens if you have high blood pressure? All of those things. That is what my videos are going to be about and they're going to be very information packed and hopefully if I can control my babbling, very short. So let's get started. Today is going to be a relatively well-known one, but a lot of the stuff I'm going to share with you, you probably don't know. So today's guest of honor is the aloe vera plant. And I need to repot this one, so sorry about that, but he's growing out of his pot. Um, aloe vera is recognized by everyone. It's easy to grow. It does grow best in zones 10 to 12. If you are uh, lower than that or colder than that, then you need to go ahead and pot it and bring it inside. Or if you're in a frostish area but not freezes or snow, you can possibly cover it in the wintertime when that happens. Um, obviously, it's two to three feet tall. Uh, we all know it's beneficial um, juice inside and it helps us with our skin. Uh, it's filled with a gooey sap. You can recognize it by the, there we go, by the little spots on it um, and the long, thin, uh, thick leaves. So like most of the other family members of the aloe vera family, this one will grow pups. And what I mean by that is it'll grow new plants. So it will actually self-propagate and grow more for you. It is slow growing, but it does it. And all you have to do with those is pop them off. Uh, be very careful and gentle and they should have a little bit of a root system and they should have some leaves sticking out and pop them off and replant them and you're good to go. So what are the external uses of this? Well, first of all, it's edible, but it is. Um, you can eat the leaves and the gel raw or cooked. I do not recommend that you eat the outer portion of this leaf. Go ahead and slice it open and eat what's inside if that's what you wanna do and that's your thing, but the outer portion is extremely bitter. So I don't recommend that. Um, you can also cook it if you want to. It's supposed to be good poached or soft boiled. I have never tried either one. I've only used the plant medicinally, but to each his own. Also, some people drink the raw um, juice and inside pulp in health drinks for the health benefits of it. So to use it externally, we all know you slice it open and you get that goopy stuff out of there, scrape it out, and you take that and you can apply it directly to the skin for various conditions, including um, skin abrasions uh, and minor cuts, um, sunburn, eczema, and it also will keep your skin clear and hydrated. So if you're dried out or your lips are chapped or anything like that, you can use aloe vera for that as well. All right, let's discuss some of the internal uses of this plant medicinally. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because we all stockpile our ammo and our food and our water and all of our other preps, but what are you doing to stockpile for your health and potential issues? And it's pretty hard to get medication. You can no longer get all of the pet medications as of June of this year, at least in the United States. You can't go online and just or to a store and just buy, say, fish antibiotics. You have to have a prescription now, just FYI. You can look it up. Anyway, so that's why I'm talking about this. It's, it's important, and you're going to see a whole lot more and learn a whole lot more in the next few videos that I do about this. So the gel can be eaten uh, one, two, three ounces with each meal. Um, you can add it to juice if you need to because it is kind of bitter and it will reduce heartburn. 
It also helps with IBS or irritable bowel syndrome symptoms like cramping, bloating, um, gas, and stomach pain. You can use it also for your gums and your teeth. So if you have swollen or bleeding teeth and gums, obviously your teeth can't be swollen or you got me. Anyway, um, you can go ahead and use this as a mouthwasher of rinse. So, you know, after you've brushed your teeth, go ahead and mix some of this gel and goopy stuff in with your water and put it in your mouth, swish it around quite vigorously, let it sit for about a minute to a minute and a half, and then spit it out. Do not swallow it, spit it out. And you do this several times a day and it will help alleviate the swelling and the bleeding and it will also help with the pain. It is also, believe it or not, a diabetes um, help. Uh, I'm not going to say it's cure. There is no cure, but it is a help. So in people with type 2 diabetes, this is not a type 1 myelitis diabetes person thing. This is type 2 diabetes. Um, you can take two tablespoons of the juice with the pulp in it or not. Take it daily, and it helps regulate your blood sugar levels. So very, very good to know in this little green plant that it does all those things. So another internal use for aloe vera is it is a laxative, not really shockingly, but it is a laxative. Um, it relieves constipation, but you definitely want to use it sparingly for that reason. Chances are if you do have constipation, it is from a different cause. So try to treat the root cause instead of just treating the symptom. But it will work if you need it to. Um, so let me go over the have to talk to you about it stuff. Do not use this internally for long periods of time. If you are using it for one of the things I've discussed with you today, the best option is to take this, say, for a month full on and then give yourself a one to two week break before you go back on it again. Um, don't take it internally if you are pregnant, if you have hemorrhoids, and if you have any kidney issues like kidney stones, kidney, kidney disease, anything along those lines. You do not want to take this internally. There are other medications or plants out there that have medicational, uh, med medicinal uh, purposes that are similar to this, which I will be sharing with you in the future. So keep that in mind too. Remember that the healing properties I'm sharing with you are from my own knowledge of the courses I've taken to become an herbalist. Um, I do not recommend this for you personally without speaking to your own doctor. I have um, tried some of the uses myself and they worked for me. So this is for your knowledge. This is for educational purposes. I am not diagnosing or treating you. Um, please, if SHDF happens, you've got this in mind, you should be starting to grow it now, go get yourself one or get yourself one in the spring if you live in the north. So I hope you like the video, I hope you like learning about aloe, you will see more of these from me and please like, comment, share, all those good things and if you want to hear about any particular herbs or plants, please let me know because I'm always happy to share my knowledge that I've gained. Thank you very much and have a great day.